1,084,954. That's how many buildings exist in New York City as of the last count. 1.68 trillion pounds. That's how much all of those buildings collectively weigh. And two to four millimeters, that's how much the city of New York is sinking as a result of all of this weight packed into such a small space. New York City is the most densely populated city in the United States with around 8.5 million people packed into a 300 square mile footprint. So it's a little frightening to think about this impact we have made on the region and it makes you question whether or not this area has maybe been overdeveloped. Now two to four millimeters per year doesn't sound like a lot. That's like this much on a ruler, it's probably not even picking up on camera, but it is a rate that's considered faster than average, particularly in parts of Manhattan, Brooklyn, and in Queens. They call this whole phenomenon subsidence, which is the term for the sinking or settling of the Earth's surface due to natural or artificial causes. And this subsidence effect is happening partially due to all of the weight of the buildings, but also due to rising sea levels. It's a weird compounding effect that's happening here because on one hand, you've got 1.7 trillion pounds of weight that's just pushing down on the Earth's surface. But then you've got sea levels going up due to a combination of global warming, melting glaciers, and the expansion of the seawater itself. And I know there's some people out there who think that climate change isn't real. We're not going to go there in today's video, but the point is there is evidence that the land itself in New York is moving down and the water levels in the area are moving up. A team conducted a study and published a really detailed paper called The Weight of New York City, Possible Contributions to Subsidence from Anthropogenic Sources. That's a mouthful. The plain language summary is that the point of this paper is to raise awareness that every additional high-rise building constructed at coastal, river, or lakefront settings could contribute to future flood risks. Yes, that's the plain language summary. In this image, they show where they calculated building masses and load distribution, and areas are highlighted which show areas where there is increased subsidence. This map shows the different soils and materials that exist around New York City, and obviously different elements like artificial fill, sand, clay, and boulders are all handling these loads of weight very differently. They get into a bunch of confusing math about compression and settlement and then they round this paper out with a map that shows the exact areas where they predict the most severe impacts are happening around the city. This report is intense, you guys. I'll link to it down in the description, but it's pretty cool to see how much effort they put into just calculating how much weight is distributed around the city of New York. This had to have been a ton of work. It is not uncommon to see very, very tall skyscrapers scattered around New York City. I mean, there's so many big buildings that in a drone shot, the 15 to 20 story buildings actually look really small. Some of the most iconic buildings, of course, start with One World Trade Center. This one stands 1,800 feet tall. We've got 111 West 57th. This is a condo community that stands about 1,400 feet tall. Central Park Tower stands at about 1,500 feet. One Vanderbilt is 1,400 feet. And then one of my personal favorites, 432 Park Ave. This one also stands at about 1,400 feet tall. The list goes on and on, but you guys get the point. There is no shortage of super tall buildings around the city. What's even more interesting here is that if you spend any time around New York right now, there's still so much development that's happening. It seems like just about every other street, there's a big construction fence with a new building going up, replacing an older and smaller building that was once there. Generally speaking, the engineering that goes into these super tall towers is very, very intense. We learned a lot about that engineering after studying a couple of buildings in New York that are either currently leaning or were once known to be susceptible to collapse. So even though the results of this study are pretty scary, I'd be surprised if the developers in New York and the city planning departments aren't already thinking about this. During the peak of the pandemic, the Manhattan area population got hit hard. They lost an estimated 8% of their total population. But fast forward to more recent reports and Manhattan has recovered all of that population right back and then some. With New York City full of job opportunities, world-class dining, a vibrant culture, and an endless supply of things to do, I don't anticipate there being some mass exodus anytime in the foreseeable future. Plus, let's face it, even in the worst areas where New York is sinking as much as four millimeters per year, it'll take around 76 years before the city sinks as much as 
the length of this ruler. I know that's a little bit short-sighted of me, but I think that these findings probably won't change the way that people are living their lives out in New York City, at least for now. I'll see you guys next time.